probably one of the the most significant epiphanies I had in my career was when I got hired by Amblin, which is Steven Spielberg's company, to go to London to be the associate producer on American Tale 2. Well, as soon as I started, virtually from day one at Amblin, I noticed a quantum shift in the culture from any other place that I've ever worked. At Amblin, people use the words, we, our, us. They were incredibly inclusive. Whereas the other places I had worked, you would get a certain amount of people fighting for ownership of what they've done. Well, I had this idea. I thought we might. That kind of thinking. But in Amblin, it was absolutely absent. Everything was about we. I think we should do this. And our goal in this will be, it was unlike any other place I worked, and I immediately fell in love with it and realized that this culture would, would help me form as a leader in a better way than probably any other place I could have imagined. So to spend my formative, formative years as a manager in that kind of culture probably made more impact on me than anything else that I could have had in my life. Now, one thing that uh, I noticed when I went to London is we had many, many, many uh, English as second language people. We had many foreign nationals. We had them, for, I think we had set between 17 and 28 different countries represented at Amblimation working on American Tale 2 and our, our, and we're back in Balto. And in those first years, I had a lot of trouble communicating, getting my wishes across to them. And I used to blame the, the workers, saying that they're not understanding what I'm saying. It's their fault. And what I came to realize as time went by was actually, no, it's my fault. It was my fault. And the most important realization I had was that the responsibility of delivering the message is on the person giving the message, not the person receiving it. So all those times when the the employees and the artists were having difficulty understanding what I was trying to get them to do, that's my fault. That means I wasn't clear enough. And let me say that again, the responsibility of delivering, of getting the people to, commu to understand the message is on the person delivering it. It's very important you understand that. When DreamWorks started, I went on a few trips with Jeffrey because we were trying to entice talent to come to work at DreamWorks. And one day, in the back of the car, I was talking to Jeffrey and I said, Do you, are you going to miss having the input of so many movies like you had at Disney? Because at the time, Disney was making about 30 movies a year, and that's not including the Miramax movies. And the goal for DreamWorks, even with a live action, was about eight movies a year. So that was quite a lot less. And so I thought that Jeffrey might get bored only doing eight movies. But his reaction actually surprised me. He said, no. In fact, the problem with doing so many movies was that he never got to give any attention to any of the ones that were going well. He said, when you do that many movies, all your attention is focused on the, the pictures that are out of control and having trouble. And so you end up going to all the troublesome films and having to be bad cop all the time, and you never get to enjoy the movies that are going well. And so, you know, I, I, I checked, and in 1984, 1994, I mean, the last year that Jeffrey was at Disney before he went to DreamWorks, they made Up in the Air, Cabin Boy, Iron Will, My Father the Hero, Blank Check, Angie, Ref, The Ref, D2, The Mighty Ducks, Holy Matrimony, White Fang, Myth of the White Wolf, The Inkwell, When a Man Loves a Woman, Renaissance Man, The Lion King, I Love Trouble, Angel, Angels in the Outfield, In the Army Now, Color of Night, It's Pat, and Camp Nowhere. 
Now that's 20 movies, but we're only in August. They also made Twist of Fate, Quiz Show, Terminal Velocity, Ed Wood, Robert A. Heinlein's The Puppet Master, Squanto, A Warrior's Tale, The Santa Claus, A, a Low Down Dirty Shame, and finally on Christmas Day, Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book. That's 29 movies. And when I saw that list, I completely understood what Jeffrey was saying. The same thing is true with uh, being a manager, is that sometimes it's better to take a smaller, to not get the bigger promotion, stay with a smaller group of people, because then you can focus on the employees that are the most fun, the high, the high achievers, the high productivity people. But when you sometimes have such a large group, the, the trouble is, just like the, the teacher in a classroom, you end up having to focus on the, prob on the problems and you never get to enjoy and savor the reason you got in the business to begin with. I think the last thing I'd, I'd like to leave you with is a story that happened during the making of Prince of Egypt. As part of our process in animation, we often have these in-house screenings where we kind of beta test a movie. We put temporary music and sound effects and storyboards and we screen it to ourselves and members of the crew to get ideas of what's working and what isn't. Well, we had this one screening where we got all kinds of notes from everybody and it was obvious that some things had improved and, and some things were not as good as what we had. And our head was reeling because there were so many different notes from so many different people and as to which direction we should go. And we reconvened in a smaller group in at Amblin, because that's where we had screened it. So we're sitting in this room and there's all these uh, ephemera of, of Steven Spielberg things around us of Mad Magazine covers from E.T. and Raiders of the Lost Ark and there was the little sh original model for E.T.'s ship that was in a, a case in the conference room and while we were sitting there and our head was spinning from all these notes that we had Steven Spielberg actually just stopped by by chance and he looked at us and he could see that we were all limp and and he said how'd the screening go and Jeffrey said well you know I think some things were not as good as they were last time and Steven said oh you improved it to death and that was exactly right what we had done was taking some things that had been working and break them because we we changed them just out of habit because that was our process to look at things and to change it and Stephen's comment was right on the nose when he said we improved it to death and I learned and I think all of us did in that meeting that sometimes it's different but it's not better it's just different and I guess that is one of the key attributes of a good leader is that they can distinguish the difference between different and better and call it and say you know what it's good let's move on and I guess that's what I leave you guys with sometimes it's good and you just move on